Hello and welcome back to Section D. We're here at Blackland Moor Barbers in Brighton and today in the chair we have Mr. Woody Green. Hey man, how's it going? You're good man. What are we doing with you here then bro? Um, yeah, I was thinking the sort of, almost like a, inspired by a sort of like 90s Italian footballers kind of thing. It's okay. like mullet-y-ish yep. thing. It's like middle parting, but a bit of a fringe. So Woody, let's start this off by you telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I'm a songwriter, poet, write, write a lot of poetry mainly. Yeah, I've been living in Brighton now for the last couple of years. I grew up in Ireland as a kid. Yep. I moved to London, spent most of my life in London. I tried different avenues to go down, like, you know, I went to study architecture and stuff like that, but dropped out. Kind of through exploring all those different things, kind yeah. of came to find that music and poetry was the one. Did you always have a love for music and poetry growing up? Yeah, de music definitely, probably my earliest memories, you know, like singing in the car. Yeah, with poetry is kind of one of those things that I'd end up doing when I was supposed to be doing something else. You know? Sure. But I think it came quite naturally at first. I can't really remember the, the first time, you know, so I'd say I was about, you know, 15, 16, at that stage in your life, it's very emotional it's, and yeah, yeah, sad kind of. <laughs> yeah, poetry is a good thing because you can you can write at any mm -hmm. any point in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, you might like observe a little thing in the street and yeah, you can trigger trigger something. You know, so anything can inspire you. I think so. I think being open to you know those observations and those things that you might see when you can tune in with that, anything can be a, a, an inspiration for a poem or sure. a song. Or, Tell me a little bit more about your music and, mm. and how that, how the being a poet transitions into that. Yeah, um, music kind of came first, I think. Like okay. I used to write lyrics, like if I was, was writing a song, I'd be writing lyrics for a song or putting words to music. Lately I've been, if I've got a poem or you know a set of words that mm -hmm. I, I really like, to try and create some music that goes with that, like sure. see what kind of natural melodies come out within those sentences. I can write anywhere, anytime, any yeah. place, like any little moment of time I have. I'm waiting for a bus or a train. Or, sure. You know, you sat in a cafe, you can write. Whereas with music, it's more dedicated time and space. Mm -hmm. That has its benefits too, you know, like yeah, working sure. within those limitations. And, but I think I just, it means I don't do it as often. Sure. Everyone has their strengths when it comes to music, don't they? You know, when I played music, like you just mentioned there about coming up with lyrics mm. while waiting for a bus. I would be able to do that once I've already come up with the um, composition of the song. Yeah, you can hear it in your head, like yeah. you know what to... The yeah. melody, yeah. It's almost like there's, it's like a little framework to work to. And once you have those boundaries within, then mm -hmm. it can be a lot more creative within that. Whereas yeah. when it's completely open, it's like, where do you go? It's, yeah. How many albums and singles have you got out, man? Um, like one album, which yes. is my debut album. Then yep. a couple of singles, especially with that, and like a, an EP. Well, I've got an EP that's still to come out this year. Two singles associated with that, which are already out. That, that first album recorded in Amsterdam, actually. Nice. And with Go. Yeah. Uh, from Kiki Akimoya, he produced it. Had those songs for a long time. Kind of very like folky, sort of psyche acid folk sort of thing. Like before I started doing the solo stuff, it was in Wax Machine, at, at the Brighton band, who a lot of people in Brighton have been a part of at yeah. different times. Go was producing that album. At the time I had this bunch of songs, he was looking to produce more. Self-released that one. Yeah, the recent, recent stuff out through Strong Island recordings. So who, who have you got in your uh, in your live band? At the moment, the core people are uh, Graham, Graham Nunn, Astro Gray, plays bass in Trip Westerns. We've got Freddie Willett on bass, and Nina Rinderlind um, on cello. She okay. plays in the New Eves. A couple of different drummers at different times. Mm -hmm. Last couple of shows, we've had some like brass and clarinet, like trumpet and clarinet.
One of the benefits of being in a band is you can sort of lean on, on each other mm. at points. Yeah. How do you find the ups and downs of the musical world being a solo artist? I think just having to make all the decisions yourself. There's not really anyone to sort of, is this a good idea? Mm. Like, or should I mm. do this? Should I do that? Sure, man. Um, at the same time, you get to work with loads of different musicians. Like, yeah. it's not just a set band, you know, maybe like four members. Writing-wise, it's, sometimes I, I would like to maybe do some writing with other people, but never really get to do that. I feel like, yeah, where two people's inspirations and mm -hmm. ideas can come together could create some really cool stuff. How do you find the music scene in Brighton? So many musicians, so many great bands. I think maybe because of the size and there's like a set amount of sort of venues and it means that like things have to be good to mm -hmm. be to be put on sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I've noticed in London there's a lot of, on the, on the small scale of yeah. music and anyway, like not so great promoters that kind of put on random things. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Maybe the, the bands don't necessarily fit together on mm -hmm. a night. And, mm -hmm. Whereas I find that I don't tend to see that as much in Brighton. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like if you want to be put on, you need to be, you know, meeting a certain standard almost. It's also nice to know that because of that, if you do get put on, it's like, I must be good enough then. Yeah, it's hard to hard to remember that actually. Mm -hmm. I think as a musician, you're always having your doubts about what you're doing, mm -hmm. how good things are. Or... So, I mean, you've touched on a few things, man, but what, what's next for you, Woody? What's, what would you like to do in the, for the rest of the year? What plans have you got? Poetry-wise, I've just been submitting uh, my poems to a lot of like, magazines and stuff. Yeah. Um, I've written a, like, a poetry collection. Like, in order to get that published, like, that could be quite a long process, so I don't know when that might happen. So just in the meantime, I've been sending out my poems to different magazines and publications so that they can you know, publish some of the some of those poems hopefully and mm -hmm. that give more weight to sort of the book proposal to different publishers and mm -hmm. stuff like that so. mm -hmm. and also just writing more trying to write improve my writing as much as possible mm -hmm. be more observant and present so i can see the ideas when they come music wise i've just i've got an album's worth of songs nice. so it's just I need to figure out and get the funding to get it recorded. Get it made. I'm going to record it like, yeah. and all that stuff. So I'm not in any rush necessarily because the, the full EP hasn't even come out yet. Sure. The, the most recent one, so. Sure. 